I couldn't even believe myself, seriously, honestly, up to today, I'm still wondering, actually, if I did this. Alright guys, I just came across this video of this young Igbo guy, by name, Emeka Nelson, who built a water-powered generator. I want you guys to watch this video with me and see the kind of talents that is going unnoticed in this country. Watch the video with me, thank you. It's not going to get exhausted, okay? It's just that the, the some part, the machine itself needs to rest after six hours. There's a whole lot of homes here, people that require least power, but they don't have power. I mean, like clean and affordable power, they don't have it. Now, but my ultimate goal is find it, find it like this project, this work, seeing it in people's homes, people use, making use of them, solving people's problems. So it's still on that test run. And the, the next goal, maybe after this test run, we'll find out some faults, the limitations of the machine. We're trying to do some improvement. If we're satisfied that this can actually go out there in the market and solve people's problem, without creating problem, another problem for them, then we are good to go. To know how Nigeria generated, they told us that Nigeria generated electricity from water and from a place called King Dam in Niger State. So that was what brought about my curiosity. If we literally we can actually get electricity from water, why then is it that every night, like you hardly had a stable electricity, water is free, you can get it anywhere. The woman actually started laughing at me then. The following day, immediately she said that I went back home, got two cables, uh, use a bowl, fetched water, dipped two cables inside, thinking that there will be like the, the, the halogen lamp will glow. But I know they didn't glow. I was I was pretty de devastated that afternoon. I left the following morning. I went back to school. I was anti. You told us that we generate electricity from water. As you are lying, no, we are not supposed to lie. A, a whole lot of things actually inspired the work. Uh, because the work, I should say that the work is just as old as myself. The work, yes, the idea, the work, trying to put in it together, the journey so far has just been just as old as myself. Because, um, yeah, because I've actually, I actually started working on it as far back as from primary school. That was from my primary too. So that was was when the whole idea started, and it was actually as a result of the fact that I actually wanted to read. Uh, you know, migrating from one location to the other. Towards then, back then in the village, uh, maybe people see me then as pretty intelligent, small lad. I was roughly three years old then. So, migrating from the village to a different part of the country, maybe in a more developed area. So, I was like, I was actually put into a private school where I saw kids that are the same age as myself. These guys could literally read, uh, maybe write, and even spell. But for me, the people th thought then that I used to take first position in the village school then. I came here and I, I couldn't actually do much. So it, it was really embarrassing. So, But being a very curious human being, I wanted to read. Because I knew that the answer to whatever the equations on the board that I saw back then, 
all lies in the book. But I had this kind of DB. I really wanted to know why. I really wanted to probably follow with my mates and be able to read. But as let me have it then, the, the, the issue with the electricity in Nigeria was what actually provided because after school, I'll go home and I'll tend to read and uh, there will be no electricity power supply. We well, used to use this uh, kerosene lantern and coal. And because of the kind of woman being I am, I don't usually, uh, should I say, get along very well with kerosene lantern because of the smokes. So it usually filters my uh, uh, get into my eyes. So then that's when I started looking for an alternative. But no, at this age, I've already known how to maybe put up a, this uh, tiny touch, you know those old no model touches, the halogen uh, bulbs, I, I, I can literally connect cable, wires, and touching the battery and light comes up. So all those things, I really know how to get it done, even as of three years old then. So time goes on, it was like, okay, I wanted to read. We had a library in the primary school there. That was Kemi Nodran Primary School. It was actually in Anambra State. So I'll just sneak into the library, library, pack books, but to read becomes a problem. So that was when, it's because of that kerosene lantern issue, that was like, okay, let me read. Let me, let's look for an alternative way to read. The idea was, okay, let's create something. We never knew what, but I wanted us to, because I, all I did was I built a rack, or had to pack a whole lot of discarded batteries inside, and I had a board. It doesn't actually last. The problem is, how do we get the alternator? So there's this a river around the governor's lodge and more. The river still exists, we call it Obibia. So the idea was like, okay, let's construct this, go and put it in that river, and to say that it will generate from the flowing water. So the river is flowing, we can get it. But as kids, we never factored in how do we evacuate the whatever we generate to the house so that I can read. So that was those things were not even part of our plan. All we wanted, I wanted to generate electricity with the, from the stream. As God may have it, with time, I just, the first design that was successful was around six point something volts. And by then, if I had stole his grandfather's uh, <laughs> bicycle dynamo, because that was what we used to put on the coil as of then to turn and uh, get our energy. So these were just the shots how the whole thing started. It's already over 20 something years old now, still going, though he has come of age and advanced format. So we hope uh, very soon, probably by next year, the main prototype, the MVP design should be out there and we'll be heading to the market. The, one of the major challenges we are having is funding and enabling environment. Because of the way, the nature of the kind of environment, yeah, some of the parts will have to source it out. That's just what usually, it usually comes from myself and friends around me. The, one of the major challenges we are having is funding and enabling environment. Because of the way the nature of the kind of environment here yeah, some of the parts will have to source it out maybe you have to create a design we have to liaise with some companies outside there we'll tell them, but you know when it has to do with it probably at the end of the day it looks like they take up on trying to develop this with you and you keep on getting a feedback oh we did this it didn't actually work we found that maybe there's a better way to do this so it's more like going forth and back forth and back forth and back this is exactly what actually happens in a real in an ideal laboratory yes, government can actually come in and maybe number one they, they need to start creating the enabling environment for us maybe a channel whereby we can actually access funding machinery equipment because after the country they find that a company can a, a, a government can probably get to partner with private individual probably build a laboratory a standard workshop these things we wear in engineering, everything about the engineering, science, tech actually starts from a workshop and a laboratory. And we don't necessarily have those kind of sophisticated equipment or maybe environment here. So I think this is exactly what we are lacking. So if government needs to come in, I think these are the areas we should with the funding, maybe put, uh, and creating this kind of environment I've actually mentioned. These are the areas that the government can actually go. They can usually come in into tend to, tend to, uh, in the terms of trying to partner. But I, I'm the type of person that believes that do the right thing, the money will come. So that's just my advice. Imagine if this guy is a Chinese or a Japanese. He could have become a billionaire and even more popular. Because Nigerians will be traveling to Japan and China to go and buy this product. But because he's in Nigeria, nobody cares. Any day our government will start supporting talent like this. That is the day this country will move forward. Imagine if this guy receives support from government and start producing this, this thing in large quantity to serve people in the villages. 
tell me why Nigeria is not going to become like Chinese and Japan if government can start supporting talent like this. We have so many people like this guy you are seeing here. We have so many of them. People doing a lot of things. People inventing so many things. And yet, zero support from the government.